Okay, so about uh, talking about nuclear colonization of the Baltic Sea region by the global ministry, military industry, where Sweden is a key player. We had this uh, Baltic Sea tour in 2010, and uh, <coughs> that's when we declared Swedish parliament decision illegal. And we didn't realize at the time that we had the right to do it, but we now know that as aborigines of this territory, of course we have the right to declare such decisions. And uh, <coughs> by the God's laws and our f uh, predecessor laws, we declare these decisions illegal. To have these mass... Uh, mass um, <coughs> Um, murder systems in place. So what was this about? Let's go on and find out. about Swedish Parliament who made on the 17th of June 2010 a decision without um, having these questions of nuclear in the election campaign at all. They made a decision and overturned the democratic decision of the people of Sweden taken in 1980 to um, dismantle all nuclear power. But Swedish parliament overturned that decision and said that they will not dismantle it. And, and we um, declared that decision of Swedish parliament illegal. Anyway, talking further on the subject, then I told to, uh, to you that Helcom has declared Baltic Sea the most radioactive sea in the world, and that is Helsinki Commission, Commission overview from 2007. Baltic Marine Environment Protection Commission, that is, where you can find this finding on page 17. The levels of anthropogenic radionuclides are higher in the Baltic Sea than in other water bodies around the, wor the world. Compared to the Northeast Atlantic and the North Sea, the concentrations of cesium-137 in the Baltic Sea are 40 and 10 times higher, respectively. And here you can see the maps of cesium-137. Is it quite good? Mm -hmm. And this is plutonium-239 and 2340 in Riga Beach. Here, that would be these marks, but as you see, the other places are just awful too. And, and this is a map of cesium-137, strong cesium-90, and... Cobalt-60. Um, in the Baltic Sea that gets out from nuclear power stations. And so we can check on the military industry as uh, the atomic industry was created by the military industrial complex. That is its origin. And uh, that's where we will be talking about the Rata Treaty on thir Thursday. And depleted uranium is the byproduct of the atomic industry used by the military complex for the production of the most dangerous weapons on the surface of the earth. 
and uranium. In depleted uranium weapons attaches to the DNA of all living systems, causing permanent genetic damage, used in Iraq, Afghanistan, Yugoslavia, Gaza, and you name it. And recently there was yesterday in my email a report that it might have been used in Yemen, Syria. Recently, on the 25th of May. And the military complex gets uranium free of charge with the excuse of them taking care of the nuclear waste. Which they are not taking care of either. And uh, depleted uranium and other radionuclides in the air, they go around the whole world with the air flows. What goes around comes around, and air and water flows redistribute nanoparticles of the pulverized nuclear waste to our lands and forests, oceans and seas, rivers and lakes. And this is the underground nuclear test map that I was mentioning. These are underground nuclear tests done during 1966 to 1996. This is just the area of previous Soviet Union. And you can see here Texas, Nevada. And remember that the airflow of the current winds, the airflow structure goes this way. So even though they are on this side only, it contaminates the whole continent. That's what I have seen too in reports. And then this is what? Oh, that's that's the uh, Marshall Islands. And that is that's the very big, interesting. That's bikini. That's the place. big test from the it United States. Because Marshall States. Islands people are doing fabulous law work. They are criminalizing these systems. They they are the brave people who are putting change. They have criminalized United States and they have criminalized all nine nuclear weapon countries to United Nations. That we will take on Thursday. So what is this? Um, um, that is... I can't, can't really see where that is. So that, for that, that you have to go to this doesn't... link. Yeah, to find that, you have to go to this link, and there you can have the full report that, um... of these tests. Oh no, that's 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 just the United States to come in on the other side. That's what that is, isn't it? There's nothing else up there. Yeah, it could be. That's Nevada. But, um... That's Nevada test site. Maybe. Los Alamos, one of those. Mm. It doesn't seem so. No, it's the wrong latitude, isn't it? I don't know what it is then. Yeah, it's wrong latitude for that. Yeah. Nevertheless. It's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. To find the document, you go to the bsrrw.org where you will find the links. <coughs> if you can't find it. But you can Google it too, you see. That's just off the coast of Alaska, isn't it? Or, or Washington. Hmm. And this, that was the map that sort of turned me into a ra radiation area to start working with it. Because I was just thinking, God gracious, look at this, look at this. And that is sort of peaceful atom. In the times of peace, they have destroyed the whole freaking continent. It's all sort of uranium. It is, it's I don't understand that map. I mean, the, the, a lot of those sites, I don't have no idea why, what, what's going on there. Yeah, you should study this document. And uh, uh, it's sort of, they have been doing um, under the surface explosion, atomic explosions. I mean, all of that, so that's the Caspian Sea area, that's just north of, that's Georgia. So that is Kazakhstan. Is it? Of course, yeah. But, uh, no, but look at it, it's peaceful times. No, and, and you have this. Yeah, you have to go and study this report. Doesn't make sense. It has every explosion and time and amount of, of radionuclides, uh, amount of radioactive substances in, in the bomb. But um, these elements, uranium, the, the salvation uh, time 
of uranium is billions Four, of years. 4.7 times 10 to the 9. Billions of years, yeah? Oh, so, right. so this land is contaminated forever. And the underground waters and everything. You see, this is such a criminal baby, it's beyond words. It has never occurred on, in the history of the planet, anything like this. So, that's why I'm talking not only about criminalizing nuclear war, but nuclear war systems, ongoing systems that we have in place, even in so-called times of peace now. So, and then we are talking about the experimental final nuclear repositories being built in Korsmark, Sweden, and Olkiloto, Finland. And those are potential legal atomic disaster sources. And they look like this. Look at this. Isn't that nice? This is the Baltic Sea. And this is Forschmark's plan. And there are many, many six meter long canisters placed in one row here. This one little row is full of many, many six meter long and um, approximately one meter wide nuclear, intensive nuclear, the high level nuclear base build copper canisters. That's their plan. And they have, when, you, when we have scrutinized, we have been scrutinizing their plan in all, and following uh, the process in Sweden, as I have lived in, in Sweden for 20 years. So we have been following the process of, uh, as uh, non-governmental organizations in their proceedings, public proceedings, of building these nuclear waste cemeteries. And uh, we know, we have really had experts on all levels of security system in place, promised to be, and none of these security levels are functional. They are, none of them are safe. No, no the copper canister that can uh, be erosed already in hundred years and um, of course n not even transportation into the tunnel through the tunnels that's not safe because while they will be putting in the nuclear waste they will be still exploding pieces to enlarge the other parts so through the, these little transportations there will be going explosives and nuclear waste and uh, furthermore, but I will not go more into these troubles, but this is Olkilo to Finland. That's on the other, um, on other coast in uh, Finland, where they are pre preparing nuclear waste cemeteries as well. And the other trouble with this is, of course, earthquakes, because they, those places are very seismic. And uh, Professor Neil Saxel Murder has made reports and reports and books and books about the subject and about uh, the seismic disasters that have been in this area where they're putting nuclear waste previously. And will definitely happen in the future. And we're talking here billions of years forward that this rock is supposed to keep this nuclear waste. And the rock is on the very coast of the Baltic Sea and everybody knows that, it, that it's leaking. And uh, there is methane gas in uh, ice form in the rocks as this is, we're talking to northern climate. And when that turns into gas, it doesn't do it um, in, a, in a 
going through a water phase. It just turns from, from, from ice into gas and it is an explosion. It's a huge explosion where you suddenly, from one litre of, of ice, get 168 litres of gas. And that is, and on that, on such, in such dangers, they put in nuclear waste. It's just unbelievable plans they have. So the quarrying, the quarrying explosives and the radioactive wastes will be brought down into the rock at the same time when they are building the repositories. That, that's what I've already mentioned. And uh, <coughs> the toxic highly radioactive waste will disperse into the sea eventually. That is, everybody realizes that. So this is just an amazing plan they, they have. And on the shores of our sea, you know, there live all these nations. All these nations, 11 nations live around the Baltic Sea and they will all have this nuclear, already the most radioactive nuclear um, sea, and then they will have all the nuclear waste eventually. So that is the plan we have to stop. And this, this was environmental impact statement that you can find uh, Christopher Busby doing a video about how it is really a silly piece of work. It's just unbelievable how they could put such a silly report out because they didn't cover radiation subject in it at all. It was all about sort of one frog being sort of affected. The, the species will, will have to probably my less big area to, to sort of live in and, and beautiful pictures of nature they have in this very good marketing of course and so, uh, so, so they had um, so you, you, you can find this um, all of this on the internet I'll go on this is interesting, European Spallation Source that is already being built in Lund in Sweden. So that is their webpage, ESSS.se. Go and see it. And it's not defined as a nuclear facility, but what is it? It will be the world's largest and most modern neutron scattering facility. And seven of the 26 neutron scattering facilities around the world have designs comparable with ESS and most of them are equipped with subcritical reactors allowing transmutation studies. So what are we talking about? We're talking about a research facility that can be expanded into something else. So, from this research facility they can build out a future transmutation of nuclear waste facility. A future accelerator driven nuclear waste transmutation system would consist of three major subsystems. So this proton accelerator with very high power. And then they have to build more a burner reactor where spallation and transmutation would occur. And furthermore, a processing plant in which short lived isotopes that could not undergo further transmutation would be removed for secure disposal and where other isotopes could be recycled into new fuels assemblies for the burner reactor. So, when well, they will fix this, they will add those. And then they will, they will have the best tra transportation industry in the world. So what do we see? What is being planned by the military industry? They're building the nuclear waste cemetery in Sweden on the coast of our Baltic Sea. And they are building this ESS for future transportation. These are major, major plans in our area that we should know about, that we should criminalize, of course. 
because they have been brought into place without our approval. And though there is a SPO convention that allows the countries around the Baltic Sea to stop these projects, the countries about, uh, around the Baltic Sea have not stopped them. And how comes? Why not? Why? Because we are living in the times of New World Order, that's why. And uh, that's why we will be having also Perdana Peace Foundation and Criminalized War Foundation as very important parts of our expert group who, who have re revealed in their conferences these structures that are truly nuclear weapon, nuclear war structures and systems that are putting in place undemocratically these lethal industries. And about science, talking about science, talking about neutral societies of scientists. Suddenly there is all this financing for all of these scientific projects in Scandinavia. Who is financing that? Who is planning that? Why is there all the money for neutron societies? But there is no money whatsoever for the projects that local abor abor uh, indigenous aborigines want. Ecological, sustainable, peaceful, how that is. And don't you forget that Sweden is among the world's very top arm exporters in per capita terms. And um, they are also very active in NATO, though they are hiding their active position and officially not in NATO. But we'll not go into that now. And then about nuclear waste and uranium weapons. Despite what Swedish and global nuclear industry tells us, or plans without telling, Swedish and Finnish nuclear waste is the byproduct contri contributing to further proliferation of nuclear weapons materials, uranium weapons causing permanent genetic damage around the world. So nuclear industry is war mangling national economy parasites. It's undemocratical. And uh, if you can, if you, tomorrow we will have the day on uh, economy of, uh, of uh, on the very systems of economy and property. But today I'll just. Uh, Olga Sundström is in our board in the Swedish committee and um, he's an eminent economist in Sweden and um, in his book he even has named the book to translate it. It says, Nuclear Power Has Made Sweden Poorer. That's the title of the book. And uh, it can be summarized like after O investing in the military, nuclear power investments in the 60s and 70s, the mainly government owned Swedish nuclear power companies were forced to dump the surplus onto unwilling consumers at prices around half the cost of production. 
That is how 300 billion Swedish crowns were lost just in Sweden, already before the shift of millennia. <coughs> and these are the ESPO conventions and SEA protocol, the Rotten and Lisbon treaties that all this is based on. You can find all these materials on our webpage. And this is the Uratum problem here. The Uratum community is responsible for promoting nuclear research in the member states, facilitating investments necessary for development of, nu of nuclear energy, and exercising the rights to ownership of nuclear materials. The whole European Union project was started by Uratum Treaty. And now they have the ownership of all the minerals of the whole European Union. And the Eurasian Treaty is superior to European Union Lisbon Treaty. Anyway, this is the reality. And the Coal and Steel Union Agreement in 1950 is the base. And here you can see the, the power structures in these countries that five years after the war was ended, on the 9th of May, on the very day of the finalization of the Second World War, made this very aggressive war mangling plan. And uh, furthermore, they created this Bretton Woods Agreement. And actually, the whole Second World War, obviously, was there to create the Bretton Woods Agreement in 1944 as the key factor of economical colonization of nations. And that is how this nuclear war machine systemically is put in, has been put into place. And Lisbon Treaty, really, so democratical indeed, only, put, only country that was voting and had a referendum on the issue is Ireland. I was there when they voted no to European Treaty, but of course they did put a year later, another referendum, and uh, they had already all the structural solutions how to get it into yes. And by their yes, all the other countries were in the trap as well, and the Lisbon Treaty is ruling over everybody. Although nobody has read it, because it is a load of paper, that even lawyers have not, not, not one lawyer has read everything. It's like a mountain, like it's such a pile of books that it is with all its appendixes. And every lawyer has just one of these books that, at their subject. And nobody knows the whole pile. And all the people in these countries are subjects to that pile. But on, on Friday, we will solve the issue how we will put in a scientific solution to bring it all to the resource-based economy, that is ecological, economical and social welfare. And where it, people will have guarantees to cover basic needs with resources for each living system, and not only people. But for that, we have to decode away the current feudal economical systems. That's quite a task on our hands. <clears throat> and these are all the countries that already are working with us on this task. This is very important. These are the people 
that are that bringing the future. And there are many, many more. This is a very old list from 2010. So you just Google and find them. And join their troops wherever you are, or start your own groups. Because we have to get out of this trap. So on the Friday we were talking how to get from pyramidal hierarchy to the natural sun system structure. That is ecological, economically, socially protective. And for that, that can be done with a competence that is a European sun shaped with developable geographical competence maps. That look like that. And you can find the information on this webpage, Baltic Sea Region Reactivity Watch. That was that. Thanks for that part of the presentation. And uh, we can take a little break now.